Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Brief Tour of Eclipse. In this video, you'll learn about important eclipse terms, and you'll be able to find the important features of eclipse that you'll be using to create web applications. Let's first have a look at a few important Eclipse terms. Workbench, this is what we call the primary Eclipse platform for building software components. How our Workbench looks depends on the perspective. A perspective defines a collection of views that are typically used together when building a specific type of component and the layout of these views. A view is a window on the Workbench that has particular features for completing a specific task and finally we're going to deal with the workspace. This has two meanings in Eclipse. First, the workspace is a folder on your hard drive that is usually the default location for saving your Eclipse projects. In addition, in a workbench view, the workspace is the set of currently open Eclipse projects. Now let's take a brief tour of the Eclipse workbench. Here we see Eclipse in what we call the Java perspective. So what we mean by perspective in Eclipse is the set of views that are integrated together so that we can build a particular type of component. In this case, the views are the various windows that we see laid out in this perspective. By default, these are the views that are necessary to create basic Java applications. I can tell that by looking in the upper right corner and I see that Java has been selected in my list of perspectives. For example, we have the Package Explorer view. This will show up in many of the perspectives. The Package Explorer provides a list of Eclipse projects that are currently open in the working workspace. We can see that I have two projects open. The first called Test is a basic Java application. The second called Web Demo is a Java web application. In the Package Explorer, we can view the projects that are currently open and available for us to edit and work on, and we can actually expand to see the components that are part of this. I can see that in this test, I have one package that includes one Java class, and it includes the JRAE system library. In the Package Explorer, we can also double-click on a component that we would like to edit, and this will open in the main window, which is our editor. The editor is where we can type and make changes to any component that we have created as part of our project. One nice feature of the editor is the ability to double click on the tab, which will bring it to a full screen mode. We can double click to make it smaller again. You might also notice that the editor is color coded to show the different types of keywords or variables that we might have in our code. You can see other views that are part of the Java perspective. Another important one down below is the console. The console is the primary output when we want to do system.out.println from our code. Also in the console we may see messages as we run our application. This bottom view also has several other pages that we can select by simply clicking on the tabs. To see what we mean by perspective, let's select a different perspective and see how things change. I'm going to click on Java EE up in the area to the right where we can actually select our perspectives. You might notice that there have been some changes. For example, over to the right, the outline and task list have been tabbed instead of just one above the other. We can also note some additional pages in the bottom view. For example, there's a server view, which will show us a server that we're running on. We still see the editor in the center, which has our Java Eclipse Tester class open. You can actually customize the perspectives as you see fit. For instance, in the Java EE view, I may not want to see the console, so I can click on it to get rid of it. Now I've customized that for my needs. As I switch views, come back to Java EE, and it remembers my customization. So the Eclipse Workbench is fully customizable for our needs. Many times students will accidentally close a particular view that they actually want in the perspective, so at any time you want to get back to the default version, you can simply right click on the view selection and select Reset. It will ask you if you want to go back to defaults, 
click yes to do that and you'll notice most of the, of the default tabs have been provided. You'll notice that console has not been added back because that's not a default view. I like to include that because sometimes I like to test things and turn it out to the console. You can actually open a view and add it to a perspective by selecting window, show view, and then select the particular view you want either from those listed immediately or by going to other for many more. I'm going to show the console view. A few other things that you'll need to know before you start to begin Eclipse is that there are many commands that we can access through the menu systems. The commands available on any menu may change depending on what you are currently working with. Other commands may be accessed through the shortcut toolbar just underneath the menu on the workbench. Any of the commands here on the shortcut toolbar can also be accessed through menus, but as you might suspect, possibly a little quicker than getting it through the menu. In addition, it's often best to get to commands by simply right-clicking over in the Project Explorer on the item that we want to work with. For example, if I right-click on index.jsp in my web demo project, I get what we call a context-sensitive menu, where Eclipse has tried to anticipate what commands I might likely use by clicking on a JSP file. These menus will change depending on what you've clicked on. So now that you know the parts of the Eclipse workbench, you're ready to get started. Check out the video on creating your first Eclipse project. The primary reference for this video was the Eclipse Foundation website at eclipse.org. This is the go-to site for all information concerning the Eclipse project. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.